Tonight on Free Minds TV, we talk about Barack Obama's pick for U.S. Attorney General and the concerns that that has raised among some Second Amendment advocates. We're also going to be talking about the New York Police Department looking to ban or regulate air quality monitors. We'll also be talk talking about the Bernard Madoff scandal and much more tonight on Free Minds TV. And welcome to an all-new edition of Free Minds TV, where we challenge you, the viewer, to think outside the box. With you, as always, is Toby. And Nick. I'd like to thank the new people we have working for us behind the scenes, new people moving into the area, getting active in the movement of more freedom and less government. Sam from the Obscured Truth Network behind the scenes helping us out, as well as Charlie helping us out in the booth, making Free Minds possible for you guys. So thanks a lot to them and uh, thank you to all the people who support us and make this show possible. All right, we have a lot to talk about. We are going to be getting into the Madoff scandal as well as some uh, Barack Obama appointees, but first we want to focus on some local activism. This happened uh, last week here in Key, New Hampshire. We were reporting that it would happen. We interviewed Andrew Carroll on the show about some civil disobedience that he was going to be performing on the streets of Keene, specifically at Railroad Square. Uh, I don't think anything like this has ever been done before, at least a, a protest like this one. I could be wrong. I know that uh, there have been different civil disobedience protests with people smoking marijuana, but I don't think anyone has just simply held marijuana as Andrew Carroll did this past Saturday. He announced and sent letters to the police department say, and the media saying that he was going to simply be holding some marijuana in his hand, didn't plan to smoke it. In fact, doesn't smoke marijuana, doesn't plan to smoke marijuana, just simply wanted to hold the plant and show that, yes, Harm can come from me from holding the plant, not from the plant, but by the police. So rather than listen to me rant on about what happened, let's go to a video clip that we put together and take a look for yourself. Well, I'm on my way to Main Street in Keene, New Hampshire, uh, specifically Rail Railroad Square, where Andrew Carroll is going to be performing some civil disobedience in the form of marijuana possession. He doesn't smoke and doesn't plan to smoke marijuana, but he thinks the drug war is ridiculous and something needs to be done about it and trying to show that yes people do get arrested almost a million every year for simple possession of marijuana so uh, come along with me and let's see how this goes there's brisk temperatures out I think the temperature this morning was negative three degrees here in Keene so the activists are are waiting inside a local restaurant here Armadillo so let's go in and see if we can talk to Andrew before um, he comes out and performs a civil disobedience As you can see, a packed house. All right, we're here with Andrew Carroll, who is a liberty activist today, a marijuana activist in Key, New Hampshire, and you're about to have, perform some unusual civil disobedience. Mm -hmm. yeah. What are you going to do? Um, today, I'm going to be openly possessing marijuana. Um, actually, right next door. If you look outside the window, you'll see what I'm going to be doing. It. Uh, oddly enough. And uh, I've been sent press releases out, and I sent one just this morning again, just to make sure that the cops definitely know that I'm doing this, so they have you know, no excuses about they didn't know. They know, and hopefully uh, they'll show up, and um, they'll do what they have to do to enforce the law. So are you hoping to get arrested today? Um, I would say I'm hoping. You know, you never hope to get arrested. It's not a, you know, it's not a good thing to get arrested. You shouldn't glorify being incarcerated. But in some sense, I'm hoping that they will come and arrest me just because it'll prove the point. It'll prove the point of how immoral this whole thing is, and how absurd it is to arrest someone for not harming anyone, for, for not doing anything that is harmful to any other human being. You can make arguments that it's harmful to me, the individual, but uh, the state has no right to intervene on, on my behalf, for myself. And so, marijuana prohibition just makes no sense on many, many levels, for, both for pragmatic and moral reasons, and it's time for it to end. So hopefully this protest will just be one moral argument that arresting someone for, for possessing it just, is just so, so wrong. All right, well, you have a few more minutes here. Best of luck to you. Yeah, I think so. I've got like 20 minutes left. All right. All right. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> the Rider Report is uh, attempting to set up uh, a live stream so that people who aren't in Keene or can't come to the protest can watch what happens live um, via a live web stream. Uh, let's hope he's successful. Activists are starting to come outside where the protest is about to take place. So about looking towards 30 or 40 people are coming out here, uh, as well as a ton of underground local media. 
Yeah, I brought some oregano just for this occasion. Oh, right on. Yeah. It smells good. Lauren, are you going to be available for this week's edition of Free Minds we'll TV? See. <laughs> Lucky the cops will come and stop you from talking, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that is that it's time for us to look inside ourselves and decide how we're going to live our own lives, how we're going to create our own values, how we're going to affirm ourselves as human beings for the rights that we have that are innate to us, that are inseparable from us, the rights our founding fathers died for, Hampshire, where, we, we, where the, the rest of the world will be able to look at New Hampshire and say, freedom works, and freedom is a good thing. And I look forward to that day. Uh, thank you very much for all of you being out here. Thank you. Whoever Aaron is. Okay, it's in contact with That's it. Right How do you know it's not it's oregano? Violated the is, this, law. is this where it's illegal right here? Yeah. You have violated the law. It's about the same. 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 <laughs> ah! Ah, it burns the fear of heart! <laughs> is that marijuana? Yes, it is. Sorry, guys, real? when this battery dies. Uh, I believe it's real. All right, fair enough. Andrew Carroll getting arrested for, on, for touching a plant. For touching a plant. What are you going to do? Medicinal plant. Are there any rights you want to tell them? Makes sense. They, have? they haven't, if, asked, if we they haven't asked. They haven't asked many questions. They don't need to read me my rights. There you go. We're okay. We're okay. I have a question. What's, who was harmed? What's he being charged with? The yeah. Is there, there any victims? Do I know who the victim is? Andrew's the victim. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking for Andrew. Hey, if you want to have a seat, I'll let him know you're here. Thanks. Yeah, let Andrew know we're here. He's not an officer. Somebody owes me five dollars. It's unlikely the Keene police have ever had this many people in their lobby. Uh, nope. Out. I'm talking to these guys. I'm not going to talk to a mob. And that's kind of the way you guys are behaving today. Were you under orders today? Uh, no. Was this your decision? Who made the, the call on this? Who made, who made the call? The, well, how was the Keene Police Department made aware of this? Well, this thing is well publicized, evidently. Uh, there's press releases sent out. We essentially showed up on appointment. There's a framework. There's a framework that I believe in that, you know, regardless of what I feel about marijuana personally, there is a better way to go about changing it. And this, I don't think, is it. So do I, do I get upset when people are messing with me? No. It does get frustrating, yeah, it does. But I'm human. Yeah. You know? well, well, as soon as you stop enforcing the laws, then <laughs> everybody will be happy again. I, I know, but I don't think that's the way to do it. I would disagree. Wait, did you sign anything? No, I did not sign anything. Um, they charged me with a Class A misdemeanor at first, which would mean that I would be going to the corrections facilities. Um, then the cop, he wrote Class A on the paper. Then he got a call from the supervisor, he called the supervisor or something, and talked for like a minute or two. He said, really, really, okay, um, you know, it's up to you, whatever you want to do. Hung up the phone, took the paper back from me, slipped it in, like took my copy back, slipped it in, crossed out Class A and wrote Class B. So they lowered the charge after talking to the supervisor, which could mean anything, it could have meant. To me, it means that, hey, there's 50 people in my building, you better not put this guy in prison because these people obviously mean business. What's coming next? Um, anything. Uh, Is I there a court date? March 3rd. In Keene? In Keene. And we will be bringing you updates with Andrew's case. Of course, uh, there's a lot more to come with this saga. We did interview him on this week's edition of Free Minds Radio. You can check out the archive of that. It's up at freemindsradio.com. He was on the show for about about half an hour talking about what uh, what happened as well as what is next to come because he has a court date March 3rd in Keene, New Hampshire and at which he plans to attend and uh, he's told us and others that he's, he's going to be polite and rise and stand for the judge, do all that stuff, but he doesn't want to pay the fine. He's going right along with the dis civil disobedience and as of right now at least he's saying that he, he's not going to be paying the fine. He 
I don't know what could happen. He's a brave person, and um, I'll, we. We will be reporting on it as we get closer to the trial date. And for those who want more on it, they can actually hear the interview we did with Andrew on Free Minds Radio. Uh, you can go to freemindstv.com or freemindsradio.com. It's the same website, and you can hear what he had to say when he came on the radio show about this event because we were able to get in depth with it uh, about it with him. So yeah, and there's also a ton of different uh, media that was uh, coming out and reporting on this. As you can see from the video that we just showed, there were a number of cameras there. So there's lots of different perspectives you can get from the filming and more footage out there than the clip we just showed. You can check out a lot of that has been posted up at freekeen.com as well as updates will always be there and discussion boards, uh, the forum, you can, uh, there's all sorts of places you can go to learn more about this, get involved in the discussion whether you agree or disagree. That's up on our website at freemindstv.com as well as at freekeen.com and thank you very much uh, to Ian Bernard from freekeen.com for shooting a lot of that video. He helped put it together. So. Yeah, our camera had some problems so we <laughs> Yeah. We had to rely on his footage. So it all worked out together. I think it was a success for all of that, but um, we'll be bringing you more on that. But we do need to move on to the Downsizer Dispatch. Yeah, I mean, every, every week we try to bring you something that you can do about these laws because while Andrew's civil disobedience might have a lot of supporters behind it, and in fact, polls show that more than... And 50% uh, of New Hampshire citizens want marijuana decriminalized. I don't know what the uh, poll numbers would be on a national level. But a lot of people want to see the war on drugs changed or ended. But the representatives don't always seem to listen. And while we can try, we can at least have their voice be heard. And so we try to give you a way that you can do that at least once a week with the Downsizer Dispatch. Nick, what's this week's Downsizer Dispatch? Um, well, this week's Downsizer Dispatch is basically reporting that Downsize DC is having some success in Washington. One of their ideas um, is the Read the Bills Act. Basically, it would require representatives to read bills before they pass them, or they could sign an affidavit saying they'd heard the bill being read to them if they didn't want to actually thumb through it. Maybe they're a slow reader. Well, one of the ideas in the Read the Bills Act is that um, each piece of legislation that Congress is going to vote on would be posted on the internet for the public to review seven days a week before it actually gets voted on. So people would have a chance in the general public to know what's in a certain piece of legislation. Now, this is something that wasn't getting a lot of traction among Washington lawmakers. It had a lot of traction uh, among the general public. It's, I think it's their most popular campaign, well over 100,000 and messages, I, it might be almost 200,000 messages on that, sent to Congress uh, telling them to vote for the Read the Bills Act and to make it a law. Well, it is getting traction now. Uh, now that the Republicans are in the minority, they're actually pushing uh, for the large bailout, the, the new expanded bailout um, that the Democrats are expected to support. And Barack Obama was originally expected to have it on his desk uh, when he was sworn in on the 20th. Well, they've stepped back from that because they've taken a lot of heat on it. And now that the Republicans are in the minority, uh, apparently they feel that they can push for smaller government again, something that they don't do so well when they're actually governing. But House minority leaders, being the Republicans, are pushing for legislation to be posted, the legislation, at least in this case, to be posted online seven days before it's voted on so we can know what's in it. Probably because the last bailout bill was a big disaster. So it, go to downsizedc.org. Uh, their campaigns are having an impact. Uh, unfortunately, not as much of an impact as we would like to see. Uh, but the more people that are sending messages, the more weight it's going to carry in Washington. Yeah, and they make it really easy over there. It takes about 20 seconds to just send your elected representatives or drunken fools in Washington, as I like to call them, a quick message. Let them know that you have an opinion on this yep. stuff. And if you're signed up for the email list, they'll be sending you basically hot button issues every I think, what, every couple days, they send out a, a new thing to be aware of, whether it's a new piece of legislation or revisiting something from the past. Um, there's always some kind of a message you can be sending to your representatives. And Downsize DC has the advantage of bringing all these people together. Um, and you can pick and choose. I mean, you can support one campaign and not another. But the great thing about it is you have tens of thousands of other people sending a very similar message. You can personalize it a little bit, but you're saying essentially the same thing to your elected officials, and repetition kind of drills it into their heads, or at 
least the heads of their staff, and they might write down a note saying that they've gotten a lot of emails. All right. When we come back, we are going to be talking about Barack Obama and guns. Are all the fears true? Should you go out and buy a gun now before it's illegal, as well as some of the Madoff scandal, all that and a whole lot more? When we come back, stay tuned. This is Free Minds TV. This edition of whatever it is you're watching is brought to you by... Ridley Report. Ridley Report. Something, 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 something. Ridley Report. Ridley Report. Ridley Report. Something, 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 something. Ridley Report. Free Minds TV is brought to you in part by Life Productions for your basic and semi-pro video production needs. From full wedding and event coverage to DVD authoring and distributions, lifeproductions.com. That's L-Y-F productions.com. This is William from New Hampshire on Graham watching Free Minds TV. And welcome back to Free Minds TV. As always, it's Toby here with you. And Nick. I'd like to invite the viewers to log on to our website, freemindstv.com. From there, we have all the old archives of the show, ways you can help the show, and a whole lot more, all at freemindstv.com. All right, Nick, we reported on the gun surge, at least in sales, over since, ever since Barack Obama was elected. People have been rushing out to the gun shops and stocking up as, on as many weapons and ammo as possible in fears that his team may do something uh, such as banning certain guns or outlawing them or making them harder to get. Barack Obama came out and said, these fears are unwarranted. Don't worry about it. I respect the Second Amendment. Um, what do you think? Is this true? Is this not true? I know you have a little bit of new information on this. Uh, well, Barack Obama's choice for Attorney General of the U.S. is Eric Holder. And he is known to support gun bans. In fact, he wrote a, I believe he wrote a, or he voiced his, um, support for the D.C. gun ban before the D.C. versus Heller Supreme Court ruling. Basically, the D.C. gun ban said you couldn't own a functional gun in your house. I mean, you couldn't even move it from one room of your house to another, even if by some loophole the gun was legal. Um, so essentially, guns were illegal in Washington, D.C. And he supported that. Um, he's, he's also, um, there's also some legislation that dovetails with that that makes this more threatening. Because you might say, well, what's it matter what the Attorney General thinks? Maybe he'll prosecute gun, um, you know, certain gun laws more harshly, but the, the Attorney General doesn't decide what guns get banned and what guns don't. Well, he doesn't now, or she doesn't now. But that could change in the 111th Congress. Um, basically, there was a piece of legislation, H.R. 1022, that was submitted um, 2007. Now, what that legislation would do is allow the Attorney General to ban certain types of guns or certain models, certain makes, simply by the stroke of a pen. So essentially, if the Attorney General decides that the guns don't have a sporting purpose, they're too dangerous, he can just write, you know, basically write a law saying those guns are illegal. Now. now, are they attaching this piece of legislation onto the Constitution and the Second Amendment, having a whole constitutional convention around this? Because the Second Amendment makes it pretty clear the right uh, to bear arms shall not be infringed. I mean, you don't infringe on this right unless you're changing the Constitution and changing the Bill of Rights, uh, modifying it in some way or adding on to it shall not be infringed, right? I mean... Well, I mean, yeah, but unfortunately this, they have been infringing on that, right, for especially in the last several so decades. So why even bother passing a law to do this? Does it legitimis, uh, make it legitimate in some people's eyes? or I, I mean, I don't are know. Are the American people just that easy to fool that all you have to do is pull a little bit of wool over their eyes and say, well, we passed a law in Congress? No, you need a constitutional convention I, for this sort of thing. Yeah, I certainly agree. The, the only good thing I can say is that the Supreme Court came out, made a ruling that said an individual has a right to keep and bear arms. The Second Amendment wasn't some state right. It wasn't a collective right. It was an individual right like all the other rights in the Bill of Rights, which makes sense if, if you actually read that document. Um, so at least the courts are of the opinion that individuals have a right to keep and bear arms. The Supreme Court, the one that counts. Um, the problem is they allow for regulation. So they're going to say, you have a right to keep and bear arms, but we can ban certain types of guns. I mean, that's still what they've said. D.C. versus Heller didn't change anything um, as far as the government regulating firearms. So the problem here is 
that they can still regulate it. So if they delegate to the attorney general, it doesn't seem constitutional to me. I mean, the Congress, even if it was constitutional to pass gun restrictions, the Congress is supposed to make right. all the laws. But we've seen where they delegate this responsibility to agencies like the DEA, the ATF. The ATF already writes gun laws, and they're an unelected bureaucracy. They're part of the executive branch. Downsize DC addresses that too in the Write the Laws Act. The Congress is supposed to write the laws and pass them. They're supposed right. to have a vote. Well, if you were on the fence about whether I should buy a gun now or wait, should it go? Well, I'd say go and get it because, I mean, if you have the with money, the way the Constitution's it. going, it's also not probably a not bad investment, at least if you're getting something of quality. It will probably keep, if not grow in value, well, especially if they're made illegal. The black market <laughs> would pick those right up. Well, actually, black market guns tend to be pretty cheap because there's a big supply of them. Um, the <laughs> I don't know much. I don't actually own a gun. <laughs> the, yeah, the problem there is gun prices have jumped. I mean, especially with certain models that could fall under a new assault weapons ban. I know I was checking out prices. They've gone up considerably. So if you buy and then they don't enact a ban and prices fall, I guess you could be out a little bit of money, but you still have the peace of mind of buying the gun and knowing you can have it in your hand as opposed to wondering if you're going to be able to buy it in the future. Right. Well, speaking of people running out of money, a lot of investors were out of money when Bernard Madoff decided to run a huge old spon uh, Ponzi scheme that uh, took $50 billion away from poor investors. Probably a lot of them were rich, but nevertheless, they worked for their money or at least invested wisely for the money. And Mr. Madoff made off with a lot of their money, $50 billion worth. Well, he since is going to be on trial for this and may face some white collar jail time, but in the meantime, He's enjoying his life of luxury at home. He has been granted bail and is currently in his big old mansion sending off all his useful stuff, such as jewels or gold or silver, expensive things he has, sending them off to different family members and relatives and friends so that the government doesn't take them or whoever takes them to pay off his, his debts, $50 billion worth that he, he stole from people. I just wanted to bring this story up because it just shows how screwed up the justice system is in America. If you're really rich, well, it'll treat you pretty well. But if you're poor, they're going to screw you over. If some poor person who couldn't afford attorneys and couldn't afford uh, the bail uh, ran into the 7-Eleven, say, and ripped them off for 20 bucks, see, not with a gun or anything, just reached over the cash register, grabbed it, and ran out, well, they'd be sitting in jail right now. But Mr. Madoff, because he's such a wealthy person and so well-connected, he gets to get off right in his home. Just wanted to point out how screwed up the justice system is, as well as point out, you know, uh, the Federal Reserve runs a, a, a large Ponzi scheme as well, but, you know, I think that's, is that legal? or something. I don't know where how they get away with that. They Supposedly, and Social Security is essentially a Ponzi scheme. Basically, you're paying in money right now. The idea is that you're promised you'll get paid back, but that money's going right back out to earlier investors. That's exactly what a Ponzi scheme is. So you're paying for people who are retired right now, even though the impression that most people paying in right now have is that their money's being put away, they'll get it back, it's an investment. Well, if it's, the government does about, it, it's legal, okay? Right, it's only about a thousand times bigger than this Madoff scandal, but... Well, anyway, so they'll continue to do so uh, until they can't anymore. But the government, they pretty much get away with anything. All right, speaking of the government's allowed to do it, or people with well connections are allowed to do it, seems that in New York, if you have some kind of an air detector to see if there's any hazardous material, in the air, you may now need a permit to test the airwaves. Uh, um, what's going on? Yeah, basically, uh, it's, it's dealing with those air detectors that you might have seen the EPA using, say, at Ground Zero after the 9 11 terrorist attacks. Basically, you can monitor basically anything. It depends on what that particular monitor is designed to do. Could be anthrax, could be biological agents in the air, or, I mean, they're used just simply to test things like asbestos in the air and say, old public housing. Well, <laughs> the New York, police, uh, chief, uh, New York Police Deputy Commissioner on Counterterrorism would like to see it so that people would need to ask permission of the police department before they tested the air. Why? Well, the problem here is he's saying there's a p possibility that if people are continued uh, to be allowed to test the air, that there'll be false reports you know, someone will think they detected anthrax, there'll be a public scare, and we can't allow that. So the police have to give you permission first. Should we poke out everybody's eyeballs or make them all wear, like, eye patches in case they see something that might be bad as well? Because what if they say, see something wrong and they cause a panic? We should, I, everyone should have to wear blindfolds unless they have the proper paperwork. Yeah, and the issue here is that this hasn't happened. 
They're not dealing with a problem that they had in New York City after the September 11th terrorist attacks. At least they're not dealing with the problem of false reporting. What did happen in New York City after 9-11 was that independent groups debunked the claims by the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, that the air was safe. The air wasn't safe. The government said it was, and independent individuals testing the air managed to tell the public that there's dangerous stuff in the air. The government didn't like that very much. And I think that's at the heart of this. There's also the fact that New York is home to a lot of public housing, older public schools. And those buildings often contain things like asbestos and other hazardous materials that the city usually denies are there. Now, if the city is the only one allowed to test it, or you need permission before you can go in there and check the city's facts, it makes it a lot harder to expose the city for putting people in substandard housing. So I think that's probably what's at the root of this. And shame on the New York City Police Department for trying to push this through. Is it hard to get one of these um, permits? Is it going to cost a lot of money? Are they going to be hard to get or is it just pretty much... I'm not sure of the details. I do know that you will, it's not going to just be a fine. Um, one city councilor who was a little bit skeptical of this plan asked the deputy commissioner here, um, and if people use these detectors without a permit, do we really have to put them in jail? Um, and Falkenrath, who was the guy trying to push this through, said, afraid so. Oh, of course we do. Fill up the prisons even more. And while we're at it, build a few more because the current ones, well, they're overflowing. Right. So I mean, what build more prison to put people in jail if they want to test their own air. That makes sense to me, right? Free country. Well, I mean, what this is is basically the city trying to cover itself. It doesn't want the public to have access to information about what's in the air. It wants to control that information. And there's really no legitimate way. I mean, there hasn't been one case that's mentioned in this article where someone has given a false report that resulted in any kind of inconvenience to the public. And there are reports of people exposing the city or the federal government for lying about air quality. So it's pretty clear that that's what they're trying to do with this. Well, if, you had, if you're living in New York City or uh, other big gold countries where the government is, well, trampling your rights and becoming too big, do you really think, think you still live in a free country? Well, probably not. There's not much you can do about it. And if you are someone who wants more freedom and more liberty, I'd encourage you to check out the Free State Project at freestateproject.org. Tons of new people are moving into the state every day, it seems, and it's a way to get away from this big government and maybe actually do something about it. Be the change that you want to see in the world. Well, we're out of time for now. Love to invite the viewers to log on to our website at freemindstv.com. Send any hate mail or uh, I guess fan mail to free FMTV at freemindstv.com. And we will be back next week with an all new episode live this Sunday for Free Minds Radio from 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's been Toby here with you. And Nick. Have a good night. TV is brought to you by Freekeen.com. Freekeen.com features audio, video, and blogs chronicling the transition to a voluntary society. Freekeen.com also has comments and discussion forums so you can be heard. Freekeen.com.